This is the Mill Pond Music Festival, where um, a lot of different music acts are invited out to, uh, to perform. Um, and we were actually invited out due to uh, some past performances in the, uh, the Death Valley area at the national parks um, with this actual ensemble. This whole ordeal has kind of uh, gone through part of the university and uh, some recruiting ideas with the UNLV Marimba Band, the Ragtime Rebels, and the UNLV Steel Band, which uh, we've dubbed Rebel Steel at this point. So uh, we're out here doing some recruiting, kind of showing what the university's doing, showing some of the uh, cultural uh, music that we're including in our program, so we're not just doing um, you know, the classical Western music stuff. So, and that's good for, uh, you know, diversity's sake, you know. We gotta be able to, you know, make ourselves as diverse and marketable as possible, because it's, it's, it's a tough world, what can I say? So uh, our teachers, Dean Gronemeyer and Tim Jones, do a really good job of making sure we have a diverse education and make us as deadly a threat as we can be. It, it's just really fun. It's just so much fun to me. I love being a musician and playing drums and playing with other people. It's just like an experience like nothing else, really. Because music is all about interacting and playing with each other and just like locking in. And doing that is just like a great feeling. When you just finally get it and just zone in, it's just a, it's just an amazing feeling. Uh, setting up for the marimba band, and we have three players on the marimba playing a top, middle, and a bass part, and we play pop songs and, and sometimes classical songs and other things, and a lot of times we can take it out and tour, uh, do events and weddings. We'll actually be doing our professor's wedding here in a couple weeks, and it's very small and compact, and we can you know, entertain people. It's very good background music because it's a soft, mellow sound. A lot of people will look at a marimba for the first time, and they'll say, man, that's a really big xylophone. And uh, they're sort of not wrong because it's in the same family. So basically what happens is we hit these bars and they're tuned. Okay, they're tuned rosewood. And uh, we're able to hit them and they make a sound. But unfortunately, little planks of wood aren't that loud. So what, what happened is uh, throughout the course of the development of this instrument, we designed resonators. Um, basically, they're just tubes that amplify the sound. So when you hit this, it moves the air down into the chamber and the size of the chamber is mathematically figured out so that it amplifies the tone of the bar and shoots it back up out quite a bit louder than if the resonators weren't there. So basically you just have in simplest form tuned rosewood on strings over pipes in its simplest form um, to make a, a really really luscious sound. A lot of fun. I love doing this sort of thing. 
you know, uh, it's great because I not only get a chance to play, but I, uh, I get a chance to educate and to help to, you know, uh, turn some people on to something that, you know, they've heard of, they've heard it in the movies, they've heard it on commercials, but they may not really know where it's from or what it is, how it was built, the conditions that it came about in, and it's pretty special. They need to know this. It's the only instrument, acoustic chromatic instrument, created in the 20th century, so that's a big deal to me, you know. But, uh, you know, and the best part about this whole shebang, going through the schools, going through uh, the different um, places that we're performing is we get all sorts of people from all sorts of walks of life that have experiences and knowledge beyond what I would imagine they would. I mean, we had some questions today that were very specific about the tunings and how, how they go about keeping them in tune and how, they, uh, how they're played, how they're arranged, and how they create the music. And that's better than the simple cursory questions of, you know, what, what's your favorite drummer or something like that. So I appreciate going through that kind of idea. I'm a big fan of being honest behind the instrument, you know. Whether it's a right note or a wrong note, it's me. So we try to project that idea that, you know, this is us, this is our music, this is what we're making of it, we're enjoying it, and we just hope that you enjoy it too. And we have this open atmosphere, and that tends to bring people in. They want to be involved, they want to dance, they want to clap, they want to have fun with us. You know, they see us having fun, they want to join in. So the uh, having the audience have that real friendliness, that you know, community feel is nice. You know, it's something you don't really get in an orchestra, something you don't really get in a marching band. You know, it's, it's something that's pretty special to this particular genre. And I think that uh, it's a great experience for all of us to get a chance to go through that. I think music has the ability to take you places um, that just n nothing else can. It can express things that words can't say and help you dig deeper into emotions and just, I don't know, sometimes escape from reality. It's something that seeing little kids light up to it, you're inspiring kids at a young age, which is really the most important part of, of, of people's life. The, the young age is kind of what fuels the rest of their life. Being able to inspire these young kids at such a young age, it's almost like you're setting, setting the example for the rest of their life. I know looking back, there's like a couple of just particular nights that inspired me that actually set the tone for the rest of my life. In an individual kid's life, we may have changed one person and inspired them to pick up an instrument. Hey, that was really cool. I saw these performers and they were having a blast out there. And maybe they go up and they pick up guitar and they learn or they pick up drums and they learn and then it all of a sudden it inspires them to live their life and push towards doing something great. Music's definitely a global language. You know, it, you don't need necessarily need words and music to be able to communicate. And I think the coolest thing is going around the world and listening to their you know, specific types of music and the genres that you know, are very specific to parts of the world. What melody can do to your, your psyche, your emotions, is something that I don't think anything in the audible world can quite do. And regardless of where you're from, you know, how you were raised, there's something about melodies and the way they're presented that can trigger a certain emotion. In terms of the way people react to music, you know, some people feel it internally. It's a very kinesthetic thing for them. You know, they want to dance and move. And music definitely has the power to make people do that. And then sometimes, you know, it can be very visual. You know, it can create certain images that people can just kind of see in their head and dwell on. Um, and it's always a very oral experience, music. It's just very all-encompassing you know, through culture and you know, all of our senses. And yeah, it's just a very, very powerful thing.